just a bloke in a bar. Good boys. Yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. You ain't. You gonna speak like that the whole time? Yep, yep. <laughs> Your voice would be so fucking sore, buddy. Yeah, be fact, mate. We've actually. This is how we actually talk. We've been putting on voices the last three years. You know, people do put on voices. That is weird. Have you noticed when, you like, mean? if you're... Like, people, you can't always trust a voice. There's people out there that are putting on voices yeah, that and you also, would know. Sometimes when you, like, let's say you've been living in a country, but you're from another country. When you get back with your normal, like, the country you're from, you might fall into that old kind of uh, accent and stuff like that. So, wait, hold on. There's a, co- there's a, couple, of, uh, there's a couple of people, I'm obviously not going to name them. There's one person in particular that Errol, Ella and I have mused about potentially puts on a different voice. Really? Ooh. A bit softer. A bit mm. softer. Well, listen, f- friend of the Mike show. Mike Tyson? Mm. Friend no. of the show, Jack Archdale, <laughs> fucking, you know, and I love him, Jarchi, but like he. Oh, he's got range, yeah. But he puts on it, ah, you know what I mean? Where you're like, sorry for everyone's ears there, but not. Uh, I feel like Jarch puts on a bit of a fucking, you know. Well, he, 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 well he can dance around. He can yeah. dance around a twang. He's a chameleon. No he's a chameleon. Yeah, he's a chameleon. Chameleon. Oh, yeah, chameleon. Chameleon? Chameleon, Chameleon. I was thinking of Charizard. I was knew uh, you. Yeah, I yeah, can yeah. tell you were doing I'm Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon. Big Pokemon. Yeah, big Pokemon. Was neck beard. What was your favorite? What was your favorite Pokemon? I think it was Charizard. Actually, I haven't played it for a while, but I think it was Charizard. What's a while? A, huh? What's a while? Oh, like twenty years, thirty oh, okay. years. Okay. So yeah. Do you have like like Pokemon Yellow and shit? Uh, I had what Pokemon Game Blue, Boy did red? I have? I had the purple Game Boy. I think the purple one. The uh, Game Boy Color. I think so. I believe. I think so. And then maybe, I don't, I'm not sure which cartridge I used, but remember how you yeah, like you load the cartridge out? Oh, like, you have yeah. to blow Shit, on. it's not working. <laughs> well, it happened on the 64 all the time. You'd have to get yeah. over there and get into your work. And some people had a, uh, the Midas touch. Oh, yeah, like a you good know, Some people you wouldn't, you wouldn't let near the console. And then some people. Because they couldn't blow properly. Exactly. And they couldn't finesse a roof. And some people too much spit when they blew. Yeah. So you're like, you're oh, making it worse. You're making it Part worse. Part of the blow I felt was that you had to have it on an angle. Like, I don't think you blast you, it I'd, straight down. You'd want to... I'd... Yeah. Bottom to top. Yeah. Top. You, you're a bottom to top kind of guy. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> and then you got to... You, you get it in and it in, slap yeah. it in. So it, at the end, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So yeah, first you put it in a little bit, but that's not all the way in. No, and then you yeah. slam it in. You got to ram it home. Yeah. You gotta, okay. Like you you're know, like, fucking like you get like you, like you get your tip in, you know what I mean? And then boom. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that got sexual. What? Oh. I thought we were talking about cartridges. We we're talking about cartridges. What are you talking about? Get the about? tip of the cartridge in and then boom. Oh, okay, right. And uh, then you the fire up a couple of rumble a, packs, put an expansion pack in there so you can play. The, um, your save card? Yeah, maybe oh, I had like a save yeah, card that you could, like, you could take to other people's houses and that lot. <laughs> that was so good. What's a Nintendo <laughs> Switch like? I see a few of my They're mates good. who go, I'm like, fuck, do I need one? Josh has got one. He reckons it's mad. It's it the is best mad. thing ever. Is it's it really? the best thing ever. He was yeah. playing Super Smash Brothers the other day. He's like, all the old levels are on there from the 64. Jesus. And the new Zeldas on there are genuinely hectic. What about sports games and shit? Because I'm a little less like Wizards of, you know, like... <laughs> neck beardy? World. A little, Ooh, little yeah. less neck beardy. Yeah, a little less neck What, like Mario Golf, Mario Tennis? No, no, I don't know yeah. if they've come across. No, you know? but like Mario, like Mario and shit are... I'm more like... Like I play those games. I'm not so zelda you know Action I mean? RPG, which also known as the neckbeard genre. That's, is that neckbeard genre? Action, Action RPG. RPG. Yeah, usually. Zelda is a neckbeard You don't like Zelda? No, I wasn't a huge Zelda guy. I was like 1080 snowboarding and all that sort of yeah, shit. Right. Oh, 1080 Kart. snowboarding, one of the down great down games. Down. Oh, wow. 1080 snowboarding. That they was a fucking They haven't game. managed to recapture the glory of Tony Hawk's skating, though. No. Well, dude, They don't no. make games for I got it on PS5 and it's fully remastered the first, like... Oh, really? The fucking... Like, so they brought that it into noise? the modern world. <laughs> is it good? It's fucking mad. When you hit a grind, bro. Which one? What's Pro Skater 2? One, two. I think it's two and f- two. two four, I think it's one and three. two or two and. Surely four. it'd be more than just one game. The there are two games yeah. that I, like I got one and I got two, but like as in whatever. That I purchased, um, I that remember. grind sound, it's almost honestly like tickles your brain. And the soundtrack, fuck yeah, dude. Man. I um I just don't like. The, I've only got a short amount of time at the end of the day. Like after <laughs> kids are in bed, and then Evie came out the other day and caught me playing video games, and she'd never seen it. She was like, "What the fuck oh, is no this?" Way. I'm like. This is Tiger Woods, darling. And daddy's about to sink a fucking putt. And she was like, this is, she's like, can I play this game? I'm like, absolutely not. Go to bed. You'd be shit at it. You'd be yeah, shit you at it. You wouldn't be good. She'd be, be awful. It. Yeah. It'd Waste of time, out. really. Waste of time. But I do miss, I do yearn for yesteryear. I don't know if that's like nostalgia. Just yeah. hijacking miss my a time. brain. Miss a time rather than a place. Because those games, if you played them now, would be pure shit. But at the time, mm. they were 
unbelievable. Yeah. So Obviously, Mario Kart still stands there's up. There's a funny meme going around. Like, I mean, it's probably been around for ages, but it was like about, you know, me at 10 years old being like, graphics will ne- – how are the hell will graphics get better than this? And it's like from one of the early FIFA games, and it's like Ronaldo's face. Yeah, it's on like there. a block, and one block. And it's just this weird – it's like barely yeah. looks like – It's like 8-bit. Yeah. When Donkey Kong 64 came out, oh. I was like, this is it. This- <laughs> Pack it up. We've landed on the moon. <laughs> We've landed on the moon. This is game, set, match stuff. Now we've got Apple – Goggles going on. Yeah. I oh, know. Madness. We should do like Apple. Obviously, if you want to sponsor the potty, let us know. But mm. we should do a whole podcast with Apple goggles on. Yeah, we Fuck should. And we, we could like move around our windows and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, cool. <laughs> and, let it, and then there's a, a companion where you get to see what, what we, we were looking see. at yeah. the whole time. <laughs> there you go. You can be ba- at the desk next to us. And it was a walkthrough of Donkey Kong 64 that I was watching. <laughs> it's just manly highlights on loop. Yeah. Yeah. No way grand final. We, we watched, watched it the other day. day. Oh, did you? Well, yeah. it was a big win on the weekend. You know, a famous <laughs> win. We're 0 and 2. So Monday we came in a little bit. You're 0 and 2. Sorry, 2 and 0. <laughs> Sorry. Again, you know, fuck. I'm Slip. used to that. Um, but we came in on Monday. Watched 2008, 2008. Came in on Monday to camp. Oh. Yeah, I, exactly yeah. right. We still work. Like, don't I don't want anyone to like get that the is impression work. that we don't work. It was on in the sports background. Analysis. It was on in the background while we enjoyed it. You were looking at some information from when you were last won a grand final to then do a good podcast about the fact you'd win it this year. Correct. Correct. What's fucking insane seeing that back is remember when Billy Slade used to slide in with his legs to like try I and slide? Seeing it out. now, you're like, that was <laughs> revolutionary at the time. Like he was it was a, like it was a smart idea yeah. until other people were like, we can't be doing that. But it was so fucking dangerous. Oh man. He was, was a insane. he was a big knee guy. Even <laughs> when he used to leap, he'd like oh, have his knees jammed oh, out over yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, he was good. Hey, kid could play footy. Kid could play. Kid could play anything to win. But a game he was a dirty league. mongrel. That's what we're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, dirty <laughs> coins up. Oh wow, geez, already getting into the origin chat. Sorry about well, that. I feel like that's you're projecting insecurity. Like of the fact that you're going to lose again. What what we're saying is that he used to lay with his knees a lot <laughs> and uh, his feet and his feet and studs. Yeah, he's a studs up sort of operator. Okay, it's a red card in in football soccer. Yeah, Dan, and you know. But I mean, that. soccer, like, come on. All I'm saying is, mate, it's dangerous. Are you, are you disrespecting soccer there? You're like, you're. A, Weren't you reared on a healthy diet of soccer? I, I was. Isn't that, be, isn't that sport that gave you everything? You were the next Harry Kane. <laughs> I uh, I am and do appreciate soccer, but there is no denying that there are so many drama queens in it. It's actually ridiculous. Do you now prefer rugby league to soccer? Like, is Watching it your it? favorite sport? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It'd be fucking actually kind of wild if it wasn't, I guess. Well, <laughs> oh, that means I'll be watching something I don't enjoy like all weekend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be torture. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I enjoy watching um, footy more than watching soccer. But I do enjoy the soccer highlights. I've been getting a little bit back into it with uh, Ange over with Tottenham. Yeah. But um, not that too much into it, if I'm being honest. I enjoy probably, I enjoy watching a good game of footy as much as a really good boxing or MMA fight. Like they're probably... Like, so I enjoy footy more overall. So you can give me a bad game of footy over a bad fight. But yeah. a really good fight and a really good game are about the same. Yeah, I agree. I actually think a really good – I almost – Might be the best ever. The really good fights is, like, the best thing to – Yeah. Like, the, I, nothing makes my palms sweat Ooh. and my fucking chest beat like a, <laughs> like a fighter I'm really invested in and I'm like – well, It needs a big build-up yes. for that to be to, – for that yeah. to occur. Like, a, a good fight on the face of it – won't move my needle as much as like a huge build up into a great fight. Yeah, that's you a know fair what point. I mean? Yes. That's a fair yeah. point. Because you're, so, all you're the time. so emotionally yeah. invested. There is a lot of good fights. There really is. Well, I'll never forget. Especially the UFC. Well, in boxing, I'll never forget the Fury versus Wilder. Second oh, yeah. fight. The second fight. Absolutely. No, first, first fight where he gets fight. knocked down. First and fight. you're just sitting there going, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah. You kind of come out of it and you're like, holy fuck, I need a cigarette. What yeah. just happened? That was pure stuff. That, that was, was pure. That was that was the the real nitty gritty kind of stuff. It gets dish. you up and about. You don't see that very often. Pure is the driven snow. Yeah, I mean, and just on sweaty palms, knees, weak arms, heavy sort of shit. Shout out Eminem. Like, Jack Della Madalena's fight. Oh. That got me palms sweaty, knees, weak arms, heavy. Like that was dropping was a bloke with a broken arm. Broken arm, dude. Holy. Like snapped the whole way through, and first round did not stop punching. You didn't even really notice. No, you had well, no I idea. I didn't notice. Well, I fucking had no idea. So then a big woosa. Big knee, bro. Yeah. See you later. Thanks for coming. Good night, nurse. Thanks uh, for having us. Yeah, nuts. No, it's, it's been good. Mm. I'll see you next week. Yep. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep them short and sweet now. Yeah. I just feel like it's better. <laughs>
Because <laughs> we never get comments about asking for a longer. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, they, they keep saying to make it shorter. Yeah, yeah. You get it. that's yeah. the comments I'm seeing. Make yeah. it shorter. Yeah, they're the ones we get in the inbox. <laughs> about five minutes, though, again. These things go way too long. <laughs> uh, boys, uh, brought to you by Bloke Beer. Make sure to grab a case of Bloke Beer from your local. And uh, how's your day been, boys? Good. Good. Yeah, it's really been good. a good day. It's been a really good day. Shout out to everyone who's been getting around. Good day. A lot of you out there. Much appreciated. There was. Uh, I have d- noticed the nation has been more level-headed lately. The nation's well. The yeah. nation is far more level-headed. Their They've also got boosted. energy all day. Yeah. Denon. Their Mental immunity's clarity. through the roof. I'd also clean I mean, livers. I, it's nice that you mentioned immunity. I've just got a little comment here. <laughs> oh, what's, what's is that? Just Tom. Uh, a review from Be Good five Hulk stars. Here. Feeling great! Exclamation mark. So this bloke's fair dinkum. Coming from a bloke with a two-year-old in daycare, I'm used to being sick every second week. Since taking Good Day, I've been healthy and no sickness for nearly two months. Energy levels are increasing and not to mention it actually tastes great. Thank you very much for that. Fucking oh. Incredible. One more. I would recommend Good Day to anyone who will listen. Since taking it every day, I've noticed an improvement in afternoon burnout, mood, sleep, just to name a few. Make smart decisions. He's made a smart decision. Yeah. Yeah. My wife, sick on Monday. She hasn't, she's got her own like female vitamins and these are actually good for men and women. But Steph, I'm still like getting over. She has it every once in a while, the good day. But she was sick on Monday. She's been sick all week. Here I am, Mr. Fucking Sickness over here, laying in bed with this lady, getting absolutely nothing. Because I have my good day every day. That's all. That's the only thing I can put it down to. No sickness. Well, it's pretty life. obvious. It's, pretty, it's obvious. pretty obvious that you'd get nothing in bed with your wife. Well, the, well, no, she's <laughs> sick, Denon. I mean, but also even when she's fully healthy, I mean, you know, that's just the nature of marriage, right? We all understand her plight. Let's yes, put it that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we should feel sorry for her. <laughs> but good day. Clearly, keeping this man up and about. Well, it's keeping you on the panel, mate. Yeah. It's keeping you on the desk. Yeah. I mean, last year we I did it probably. S- 17, 17 18, 18, 19, 20, maybe 30? 20, 21, Jeez, 22, geez, 23, that's, geez, solo that's apps. Favorite. That's just a I was fucking, Mr. Solo app. That's <laughs> well, it was basically fucking Beacon, fucking Eddie no, show. Uh, it was. Yeah, but talking babies. Talking babies. Exactly. That's right. And talking a bit of footy. Yeah. And then you'd come on every now and then. But not <laughs> anymore. Good day. Bigwoodhealth.com.au. I haven't been sick since you started Good Day. No. Listen. Code dribblers, 20% off. Proust in the sachet. Proust in the shash. Oh, God. Proust in the sachet. Now. Big news out of the Rabbitohs. Lachlan Ilias has been dropped. Uh, Etch. Hawkins comes into the team. Latrell uh, was also in the headlines, Triple M interview. Uh, thoughts on Lachlan Ilias being uh, dropped to reserve? Great. I, um, I was watching NRL 360, as I tend to do more consistently in the earlier rounds of the season <laughs> than the later ones. What does it get a bit much for Well, you? just, you know, I think the weight of, of rugby league can sometimes, you can get burnout. But... Initially, well, not even initially, they, they were very much like, like he's been made a scapegoat, right? You could argue two rounds maybe a little short. Like, I was a little shocked at that. But, like, they're going, there's a lot of big-name players that should be fucking... You're like, you're not going to drop fucking Latrell Mitchell, though, are you? And you're not going to drop Cody Walker. They're proven that they can do it. They mm. can do the damn thing. We've Lock- done it. And have done it. Lockie ain't playing well. Mm. He ain't playing good rugby league football. So, fucking... Mm. It is not that shocking to drop him for a guy called Dean, a great rugby league name. <laughs> how how was uh, were they saying on the on three hundred and sixty though that two weeks is pretty fucking short amount of time? They did acknowledge that, but mm. they were just and they were just saying that like they were sort of saying and no one's been he good. runs the team at training, but he doesn't run the team on the field. I don't observe rugby league that closely enough to know what the fuck's going on in that regard. What was friend of the show Braith and Nasta saying? Braith was he just playing a straight he's back? Playing it pretty straight because he manages the kid, but he sort of was like, I guess. You know, two weeks seems like short. Yeah, it is a little bit short, but at the same time, it's been quite a while since he's played. He well. wasn't that good last year. Yeah, no. yeah, and I actually think that part of their thinking would almost be to protect him because the longer this goes on, the more he gets absolutely pumped in the media. Mm. Whereas yes. now that he's out of it, mm. it's not going to be Dean Hawkins' fault. So let's say they continue to play poorly, then they can go. Well, it is the big dogs. Like yeah. you know, the big do- like Elias is gone. We're still struggling. So that's when you do have a reason to go to the big dogs and go, boys, I t- we took out Lockie Elias, we brought someone else in. Mm. At some stage, you're going to have to carry the weight of our young seven. And that's a, a much easier discussion than going, 
the tough call of like, oh, you know, talking to a big dog and saying, you're going to be dropped and sell Ilias when Ilias, you know, he hasn't really played at that well for quite a while now, even though I do think probably like a week or two premature. Yeah. But yeah. I understand their thought process of like, it has been quite a while since he's played that well. I mean, young players get dropped. You know well, I mean? Sammy Walker Sammy last Walker, year got yeah. dropped, come back in, and like they nearly went on a run. I remember they dropped, and that's not the same thing, but like I remember Latrell at the Roosters getting dropped by Robbo. Mm. Like you just, you know, you get dropped. If, if he's going to be the real deal, if he's going to be the man in the arena, mm. yeah. then fucking, nice. you got to get dropped, you know? There's also. You know, every chance that what they've seen at training, what they've seen in the games, how they've how he's responded to criticism is alarming. Yeah. You know, in the sense that maybe they just go, listen, this, this bloke's not turning anything around. Mm. So what's the point in waiting? Even if you could argue it's a little bit premature, that would be the counter argument. Do you reckon there's a chance, and I'm only, I'm only raising this because of the clip that I uh, saw from the buy round with great and powerful Josh Mansour, that uh, Jason Demetrio maybe told him he was playing this week and then just dropped him. Yeah, I, I'm a bit surprised that some people- well, he, had to lead, he had to read Teamless Tuesdays and- Yeah, TLT. And then you're like, no, so, <laughs> whoops, sorry. You know, you're not playing. Yeah. You're actually, uh, that you sucked. Looked, any footy player is like not shocked by Mansour's story. That happens like literally all the time. I have been shocked at like people thinking that like there were some people in the media that thought it was like intentionally Mansell went to I like know. put, it's like, bro, that's an interview about his life and that's just one part of it. He also does a time. podcast every week where he could have shit on fucking Anytime. JD a million times. And also times. like, so, okay, me, people in the media are allowed to talk about players, coaches, whenever, wherever. Then however. a player, Yeah, however they want. But when a player comes out and just tells his story, it's like all of a sudden uncouth. Yeah. It's like a bit strange. It's a witch hunt, that's um, what Vossi said. Yeah, I was a bit surprised on. with that. With um, well, see, I, I, yeah, very surprised. But I, you know, he's it, a, it was it was it was weird because it seemed very unnecessary for Vossi and Brandy to go in in defending Demetrio when it seems to be so common this, this stuff happening. Yeah, well, but even like, Mansell's allowed to say his what happened. Yeah. like you know, yeah. who gives a shit? Like it's his story. Like that if that happened or he feels that happened, and also like. That happens all the time in teams. And Which is fucked, by the way. Like, yeah. I don't think it's that useful. that's a great, like, specifically the not telling you you're going and just showing you on a video at the end of the year. Like, if that was in a corporate setting, uh, not that I know much about that life, <laughs> like, you'd be in some fucking hot, hot curry. If yeah, it's like, it hey, welcome right. to Christmas drinks. We're just going to do a little cheerio to everyone who's leaving. <laughs> and you fucking pop up on the thing. You're like, wait a minute, what? I, I, I will, just got a new car. I Fuck. will say in Rabbitoh's defense for that situation, that specific one about him coming up on the video, by that stage, the contract negotiations would have already happened. So maybe they just hadn't spoken to him about him moving because like he wouldn't have had so a he would contract. have known he's not doesn't have a contract for next, the next year. year i assume but maybe what has happened is like for example similar thing happened to me i mean i didn't even get put on the video i just we just didn't talk and it was over um <laughs> your car got towed you, you just don't get told by the club oh you no longer want it it's more just like you know we we both get it kind of thing right. so in that one i you know that's a you know Did yeah you enjoy okay. that like do you think that you just as, get a, used to it, bro. as a player yeah sure but like as a as a human being, mm. well, that's like, why like everyone. Would you appreciate maybe to have been able to like have a conversation with someone? For sure, for yeah. sure. But that's why like a lot of uh, fans of footy get, you know, oh players, you know, you're selfish, you're this, you're that, and why do you make these decisions? It's like we got we tell you all the time what happens, but and then when it comes out, when something big comes out like this, it was like, oh, whoa, that happened. It's like, bro, this this always footy, happens, this yeah. always happens, and t footy players tell you about it yeah. um, with. So with the Mansour situation, what I am surprised at the amount of people like, oh, he was shit anyway. That's not the-, the That's the, not the point. The point isn't that he was- they were, Yeah, that's literally what people are saying. Yeah, oh, he was shit, he was at the end of his career. That's not the point. The point is, it's like just a little bit of communication of like, mate, you're in the side, you're not in the side before naming you. Um, that's what that's what fucking Brandy said. And that's telling, isn't he like high up at the Panthers? You're like, he was past it. You know, he was done. He wasn't the player of eight years ago. Oh, so that's what like, garners like a bit of just general human decency and respect it's like oh nah sorry dude you're not you're a reserve grader like we're just not going to tell you or show you any I think, fucking respect i think as fringies get treated like that so much that if you're in the game long enough you just get used to treating fringies like that right like ah oh, yeah you know he's a fringy it doesn't really matter and all the big Lol. dogs yeah all the big dogs just like oh i can't like that would never happen to a big dog because no, he would avenge you 
Sorry? How about a Benji? Well, no. as in he, that he was getting moved on and he found out yeah, about yeah. it. He didn't get named in a side. But like, getting na- like Benji would never get named in a side twice, get called in. The- Even that's fucking... So that happens where they just name you and then go, actually... That's, is that gaslighting? Is that the term? Yeah, it happened to me. But the, what the fuck's the point of that? I don't understand why you'd name someone and then go... They can oh, just no. change their mind. And this was... Jesus Christ. All the same... When it happened to me... In the same week? Yeah, yeah. When it happened to me, I hadn't played first grade for like... There was like, you know, articles about it. I told my family. I hadn't played first grade for like a thousand days because I'd quit footy. They'd called me up to come back. And then like two or three days before the game, calls me in his office. He's like, oh, you know... Um, Reedy's actually all good. We're going to go with him. And I was like, well, Reedy was supposed to be out for two to three weeks. And I was like, oh, okay, sweet. But then they dropped the other winger and brought someone else in. Oh, fuck. Um, and you just so when, when the other winger got dropped, were you like, this is my chance, I'm back in again? Um, Does it happen like that? Like, or is, is it, it sort of like- He's out and he's in. Uh, uh, a new uh, oh, they don't come to you and say, oh, we're going to drop the other winger and bring someone else in. They just do they, it. They just do it. It's just that guy. And you're already back in resi, it's kind of thing. Um, the, the, there's like, again, it's just a little bit of common courtesy that yeah. doesn't like it doesn't feel like it needs to be the way it is currently. I feel like it's just a remnant of a of an older sensibility. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not asking to like cuddle him and here bring in a box of cleaner tissues and be like, now listen. But, okay, like how many times do you hear players talk about like I got dropped and he like didn't tell me what I need to work on? It's very common that happens. Like you get dropped and it's not like okay, your you know your offense isn't good or your attack isn't good. Like it's just genuinely like, hey mate, you're not gonna, we're not going to play you this weekend. Um, you know, go back and keep trying, and mm. you'll be you're next up. Like it's it's vague stuff like that. Uh, but that I seems said, reasonable though, right? Like that I can I don't have an issue with. No, but the problem is, is usually when they say that to you, you're not next up. So yeah. if someone gets injured, you're you're, you're working your ass up. up. You're working your ass out in New South Wales Cup, playing good footy, and then they select someone else over you. It's yeah, more like just going, trying to motivate you. But mate. it's more like going, <laughs> yeah, if you name me. Then, like on captain's run, call me in and drop me. Mm. Then I feel like I maybe owed a little bit of an explanation because, like, three days ago I was good enough to be in the side. If it's just that, like, you know, teams aren't going that well, whatever, or even you are, mate, you're not playing this week, like, sure. Mm. But to be like, hey, you're in, soak. <laughs> yeah, as I said, as a fringy, like, this stuff happens. But what do you regular. think about it? Like, do you think it's, that oh, it, it sucks. should? Yeah, like, do you think it that's a, it's a, it's not the way it should I happen. personally don't understand it. As in, hard conversations suck. I just can't... Sometimes it surprises me how many people can't have a hard conversation. Yeah. Like, can't just go, this is how I feel, mate. You know, because as a player, if you just get that honest, like, mate... For example, let's say a coach was speaking to me, you're not the biggest swinger, you don't make enough metres, you need to work on your carries. So go back to reserve grade, try and get 150 to 200 metres a game, that, that would be way more appreciated than, oh, you know, it just didn't work out for you this week, mate, but go back, try your hardest and you're up next. Mm. That's so confusing for a, because you're like, well, what do I need to, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to do more runs? Do you want me to stick out the wing more? Do I need to work on my finishing, my defense? What is it? But the good coaches, I mean, even the good coaches, even the greatest coaches, like even when I was, um, when I was at the start of my career with Wayne, they, the Broncos are like, oh, could you please just sign up? And people have heard this story a million times. Sorry, but we're obviously talking about this. So anyway, um, if you sign for less, we promise you you'll start on the, on the wing for Broncos next year. Because uh, I'd had a really, really good debut, really good first four games, all that good stuff. I was like, yeah, of course, love the Broncos. Of course I'll sign for less. Could have got way more out, you know, in the open market. I signed for less, go away, work hard, come back to preseason, do all the hard work. I'm in the front running for that wing spot. Then uh, someone gets brought in uh, late in the preseason from another club and just out of nowhere gets named. Like, I didn't do anything wrong, didn't play poorly, didn't play great either, just solidly. Mm. He gets named uh, on the wing for round one instead of me. And I had to go to Wayne and say, hey, like, I signed on less to start on the wing. And he said, oh, did I say that? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you did oh, say that. Fuck. And then it's like, oh, he's just like, oh, sorry, mate. He said, oh, you just didn't excite me in the trials. And I was like, oh, okay. Did I say that? You so they know. just don't f- remember? Is that maybe. Maybe. bullshit? Is well, he is fucking it? doesn't remember? Well, I mean, if, there, if there's so nah. many things going yeah, on so and so many, many moving parts and so if many If you're players. saying to someone, take less money and you'll start on the fucking wing, you have to remember that. Yeah, but- Or like, are you just so used to fucking lying? No, no. He, I'm, a, I'm a nobody fringy compared, like to- Compared but, to the squad in the Broncos, so like all the saying, deals that he's doing, I don't like think it's, the deals. I don't think it's that outrageous to think that with everything that would be on your mind as a footy coach, uh, uh, just a brief conversation yeah. with someone. Well, oh, okay, but the, with someone no, no, who does sure. In, but the I know offense to Denon, no, moved like, move the needle for no. him yeah. in his own mind. But then the flippant nature 
that you the, the, that you can just casually ask someone to take less money on a promise of starting, which you actually have no fucking intention of doing. Maybe you will, maybe you won't, but you're giving this person the understanding of, hey, take less money, make your life a little harder because you can't afford it, whatever. And you'll start next year and you go, oh, fuck, did I say that? It's like, well, okay, so you just say anything to anyone. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, like, look, things change. It's just footy. <laughs> it's just footy. Well, I, but I, I, to be honest, I think there's probably an element of that. I know, yeah. but that's, I just find that whole thing really fucked up. Like, it's just because it's footy, like, it's still people. Well, it could have been, I mean, I know? ended up playing that whole season after that. So it could have been his way of, like, just motivating me. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's plenty of different. Wait, Listen, reasons for why I just want to go it. back and give that Denon a cuddle and go. That was bullshit. That was fucking. Yeah, that bullshit. wasn't even the worst thing that happened. Hug that Denon. <laughs> that's a, that's a nothing. That was like, yeah, okay. So that's you chalk that up to the game, pretty much. Like that's nothing. That's nothing. Do you think it'll change? Nah, it won't change because if you're a player and you come, I mean, look, even Josh Mansell, he's retired for a few years and he's copping it for the, for telling that. Oh, story. I know it's outrageous. And like he's just telling his story after the after the game. So like even him. So what is You what, were shit, mate. <laughs> I know. You, you were I shit. Know. And you're on the way out. Yeah. Don't let the door hit you, yeah, mate. Yeah, you I saw that idiot. comment. Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. I'm like, what fucking loser oh. is leaving that comment to Josh Mansell? He's played for the country. Yeah. So <laughs> mate, it's just it's like anything. Every workplace has its its ups and downs like so we just talked about all the downs but then look at all the good things that you get being a footy player yeah. so it's just it's part it's a price you pay to play the game really and at the end of the day good form fixes everything if you're playing good it'll take care of everything mm -hmm. and that's what usually the senior players tell you they say look just control what you can control uh, don't worry about all this other stuff because if you're playing good footy it literally is a remedy Everything's for good. everything there's nothing more rugby league than that just play good footy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just focus on your footy. Just focus on your footy, mate. Go out there and be Den and Kemp and play good footy. If you go out there and play good footy, you won't have to worry about it, the goddamn thing, mate. It's nah. true, though. Like, good well, footy erases that's why. That's why I like it. Yeah. It's, it's simple. It's real simple. It's, it's real simple, simple stuff. I've and, got to be, and to be fair, it, like in Wayne's defence in that situation, like someone got injured, boom, I was put straight back in, played good footy, then the other guy got dropped that yeah. got my spot originally. Good footy solves everything. Do we all agree that the Rabbitohs are in a metaphorical free fall and that Jason Demetrio is in huge, huge trouble. I think that what you'd need to do, Tom, is be is put your realistic hat on. Yeah. I want the punter and the dribbler, the audience, yeah. to put their realistic hats on. And let's think about this logically. Okay. The Rabbitohs were coming first last year. After round 12, I think? After round 12. They went into one of the great free falls of all time. What is the? Do you know what bird it is? That's like, is it a falcon? That a like falcon, a, the Pew! fastest bird in the world. They just fucking boost wings beside them, free fall, and they hunt for shit. In this case, it doesn't hunt anything. It hits the ground, breaks its neck, dies. <laughs> but free fall out of the eight, ninth. All the smoke coming out about Sam Burgess and fucking now you've Trail got Trail Cody. Trail Cody. Now you've got bloody Mansour coming out. It's just the muddy, the waters are muddy now. They're not clean. We're in muddy water. Mm. And they've started the season 0 2. They've looked like pure shit. Ilias has just been dropped after two weeks. There's alarm bells. There just is. Yeah, there just is. Because you've got to put last season in with this one. You've got to lump them together. Yep. Or at least I'm lumping them. Well, you look at look at other sides that um, you know may have, like for example, Dragons really poor last season. I know they were poor round two, but they came out round one and responded to last season. So it's like okay, at least there's there's movement there. There's a response to it. The concern for the South <laughs> Sydney years, and and granted they had two tough teams. Like Manly is the form team of the comp. So Broncos what? also. Is it, uh, <laughs> what? Manly oh, is yeah. the form team of the so, comp. Hold on, hold on. Actually, keep saying. Just say it again. Say it again for me. Manly is the form team of the comp. Say it one more time. I just want to get this up. Because just Jesus, you're like my grandfather. Oh, dude, he's not even alive and he can work an iPhone better than you. Just use your camera. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh God, my I'm not God. filming him, dude. I'm not filming him. I'm getting something up that everyone's going to enjoy. Manly wins the comp, Matty Johns. <laughs> Go again, Matty. What was that? I reckon Manly can win the comp. <laughs> Wait a minute. I reckon Manly can win the comp. What did he say? I'm not hearing it. I can't. I reckon Manly can win the comp. Yeah. One more time. I reckon Manly can win okay. the comp. Okay. Okay, sweet. No, I was just I think he's saying I reckon Manly can win the comp and you just said Manly are the I said they're the form team of the comp. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we love it. I just can't. We love it. Uh okay. 
They've had two tough. They've had toughish games, yeah. toughish games. But have they played well in that? that? That's what I, you know, that's what I've been saying the whole time. Is the concern is is that even in those games, it's not about results. It's just about like the way they look. Like, do they do they look like a team that's in sync? Do they look like they're sticking to game plans? Do they look like they're holding onto the ball, like higher percent completion rate because that's when they play good footy. Uh, and unfortunately, they don't. And also, just with you know all the different things, like for example. The Campbell Graham situation. Now, I, I think the NRL physio has a podcast where he explains it all, but it's just like one more thing you throw into that basket of like, mm. what happened there? You know, what, what? So, can you explain what he says? Oh, I, I haven't listened to the physio, NRL physio, but basically, they thought that they could not put uh, put him through surgery to yep. get his sternum fixed. Mm-hmm. Then they got into a couple of weeks out from the the season, and they're like, oh no, we have to. Get surgery now he's out for the season pretty much or six months or whatever whatever it's pretty right much so that could have been done at the start of maybe the again i haven't had a chance the to the the NRL physio. Did sorry you? to digress but damien cook's been dropped to the bench for this week wow oh. who who's that so Havili will start this Havili. sydney morning herald is um reporting <laughs> wow. this look I, I don't mind it from the sense of if they're going to go okay we put Havili on just to get through the shit work because i have been a big proponent and i said Ad nauseum. I like two hookers. Like I don't want Damien Cook ripping his dick off for 27 rounds for 80 minutes every single game. So I don't mind it if they're going to go, Havili, we want you to tackle your absolute dick off for first 20 minutes. Then we bring on Damien Cook and he just blitzes it through the middle. I like that. Um, I didn't think. He, I thought he was good round one, and also I didn't think he was that bad round two either. I thought Cook was one of our best first two games. Havili wasn't too bad, didn't he? Havili was great. Try and yeah. a try assist on the, uh, the, yeah. the last game as well. Yeah, but I mean, he hasn't been perfect either. Even in the Broncos yeah. game, he had a silly error off yeah. the bat, and yeah. at the end of the game as well. Um, I would say just on South. So it's obviously over the space of two years, but they've lost eleven of their last fifteen games. So I've just had a look at the ladder from last year. In round seventeen. You, like dragons were sitting right at the bottom of the ladder, they'd won, they'd lost eleven of the last fifteen. They're in the exact same position, so it's kind of glossed over a little bit because it's over two seasons. But it's um, if South started if South started the year clean, and then in round seventeen was sitting dead last, of course he'd be under pressure. Yeah. Mm. But that's what it is. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. So are you calling from interesting? Be no. Okay. Very that's a very very intriguing statistic. Mm. Very intriguing. Good Lord. I tell you what, whips are cracking. Who, who's uh, week four for you? Doggies. I mean, like if you lost, if you lose to the doggies. Fuck, I hope that happens. Then it starts ramping up of like big pressure on doggies everyone. Doggies I don't hate. Like obviously, I they're don't not, either. but they're definitely better than last year. And also I actually like enjoy watching them play footy. <laughs> yeah. Like, Hang on. Uh, it goes doggies, but then it goes warriors, sharks, storm, panthers. <laughs> you could be one from how many? A lot. And also, there is there is the reality of this Friday night, if you were to lose the nature of the loss, if you yeah. were to get pumped yeah, on big, Friday big by the old enemy, Jesus yeah. Christ. Is there a world where, like, how long do you reckon uh, Dean Hawkins has before they would move, like, Cody to six uh, to seven and bring in Jackie one Boy to one to six? That's a big three, call, though. Three weeks, three, four weeks, I'd If they say. got fucked up If they on got Friday, dominated, I think. Look, the thing is, is that... They haven't struggled to score points. It's their defence that's been just... So maybe you just go, get Jackie Boy in there. Look, and also in their defence, a lot of those points have come on the edges who haven't had Jack White and Campbell Graham. If Campbell Graham and Jack White are playing, there's a chance that they actually beat Manly and they could have even potentially beaten the Broncos. So, like, there are excuses if you want to look for them for the Rabbitohs and they're genuine uh, excuses. But the thing is with Campbell Graham, you can't count him in because he's gone for basically the season. It's going to be interesting to see how much Jackie White ensures up that edge. Mm. Um, we'll soon find out. Uh, also, don't forget, guys, Grilled have a brand new store in Top Ride. That's right for our Sydney dribblers. Grilled have a brand new store in Top Ride. Every time your team wins, you get a free grilled burger the Monday after a game. Here's what you do. You head to the link in the show notes. You follow the prompts, which include picking your footy team and signing up to Grilled Loyalty Program called Relish. Then when your team wins, you get a two-for-one burger voucher to use on the following Monday. So if your team wins and you've signed up to Relish, you can go into any grilled uh, with your two-for-one and obviously get two burgers for one. Make sure to sign up. The amount of people signing up is crazy, guys, so please. And there's actually a limit. There's a limit of uh, sign-ups that we're allowed to have because obviously they're giving away free burgers. So you do not want to miss out. 
Go to the link in the show notes, sign up, or it takes two seconds, you put your team in there, and then every Monday, a free burger. You're kidding. You're kidding. Uh, now, speaking of other droppings, <laughs> bird droppings, yep. uh, Jackson Hastings has been dropped. I just want to say before I forget quickly, I think that when a story comes out that is, you know, uh, patently false, so it came out that he refused to train for New South Wales Cup, Cup dude. And then it's then Danny Wilder apparently has spoken to the Knights and said that's absolutely not true. There was not even New South Wales Cup training that day. When a story comes out like that, I think the NRL should sanction the journo that lies about that story. Yeah, because they've just completely lied. Compl- like the, like, it's just completely what about Hastings' false. mental health? Like it's now completely he, false. he's just get, he's getting called a you know bad attitude. His personality's getting called into question now. I mean, there was a whole show. I mean, a whole segment. Sorry about if he's a shit bloke or yeah, not. Yeah, I know, like where it was like, oh yeah, like just bringing this stuff up, which had nothing to do with anything. And you're already cut, like understandably that you're getting dropped, <laughs> right? And then it's like- After two rounds. After two rounds. And then it's like, oh yeah, also did we mention that he's had like fucking, he's been a shit bloke in the past, or at least that's like how people describe him. Like, and for it to, for there not to have even been fucking New South Wales Cup training on, who was the who broke the story? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just I saw the the aftermath of it, yeah. and even stupid ass me didn't say he didn't go to. I said basically he had already done his training with first grade, and he was told if he wants to, he can go to New South Wales Cup, but he'd already trained with first grade because that's the second story that came out. But then the final one was that's no, that didn't shit. even happen. Yeah. <laughs> I, I honestly God. think the NRL. If, if they're genuine about protecting the player's mental health, now I don't, you know, I'm not talking about opinion pieces. You can call a player a bad player and he should be better and all that kind of stuff. We all agree that that's just part of a rugby league. Players should be able to be criticised. But just to make a story up mm. like that, I think the NRL should be calling a journo going, mate, that's, that's not good enough. Yeah, or, or they or, don't, or they don't get access for to, a period yeah, of time. To, you know what I mean? They, like you, your accreditation's banned for X amount. Or you of time. go like, you need to come out and fucking 100%. acknowledge. Grovel I and apologise. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Yep. Write an article about that. Knee like, pad stuff. Yeah, get on your knees. Don't even give them knee pads. I don't think you want to have Yeah, stuff. you don't well, want knee but pads. You could, also, you could also have a section at the back of the paper, not the back page, but maybe a couple of pages in, called On Your Knees. <laughs> bleeding where, knees. Bleeding knees. And it's where journos get in there and <laughs> so they make sorry. public apologies yeah, for fucking like that. talking shit. That's so I like you'd, that. You'd read that. Everyone would read that every Everyone week. Everyone would read that every week. <laughs> it'd be must read. Bleeding it'd, knees it'd, club. It'd, I tell you what, it'd thicken out the paper. Oh, you could sell ads you'd on that. Yeah, you fucking, you'd be back to 80 pages, you mate. You could. Band-aids. You get band-aids under the sponsor. Paw Paw Cream. Sort of Paw Paw Cream. Yep. Love that. Some sort of a balm. Yeah, well, it's obviously going to be a bump. It's obviously going to be <laughs> a bump. Aloe vera, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, listen, definitely some listen, there's Bro, no when shortage I was, of sponsors. When I was younger, whatever I had, it, I could have my leg chopped off and mum would be like, oh, you just get the aloe vera plant out of the back. Yeah, whack a bit of aloe on yeah. that, mate. You'd and be so we'd go out and then make it even better when you'd put it in the fridge and make it cold and you'd squeeze oh, out all yeah. the thing on and you'd be like, yeah, it's going to be sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah. The aloe vera plant. Bit aloe. Well, that's, it's good for sunburn aloe. Fucking aloe. But like aloe, when you get the plant, just snap that bitch off. We were pure and true out there, country. Oh, it's yeah. great for sunburn. On the beach. Right? Beautiful. We were pure and true out of the country. Yeah. Oh, the out of yeah, the beach. Yeah, With yeah. aloe vera plants. Yeah, yeah. aloe vera plants yeah, just run yeah. wild and free out in the bush. They're wild and free on the, bush. the country. Yeah. You can't bush. grow them on the beach, that's for no, sure. No, fuck no, mate. No, no, no. Don't see them there. No, you don't. No, mate. No, mate. No, uh, no, mate. No, mate. Anyway, with that out of the way. Oh, Jacko dropped. So it has been confirmed that that did not happen. Mm. Uh, so, as I said, I, I genuinely believe the, per- the journo that released that he, he should at least write an article saying, you know, apologize to Jacko, that did not happen. I got my sources wrong or whatever. At the very least, that should happen. I thought they had to print some things like that in the paper anyway when they fucked up retraction. I, I thought so. they had to do that. I think Only they, when the person comes at them and says... Yeah, like defamation. That's, yeah, that's so, like, you yeah, know, yeah, this yeah, defamation, right, this great, thing. Great point. But like, point. again, we, we yarn and carry on about mental health and oh, everyone, all the big days come around and everyone's like, yeah, are you okay? Are you okay? But then we just smash players with yeah, false stories. Like, and, and as I said, if it's an opinion piece, all that kind of stuff, that is fair game. But just making stuff up, yeah. nonsense. Uh, Hastings dropped. He's another one that I probably thought maybe a week or two early. But it might be of the mind, maybe similar to Rabbitohs, like it's really early in the season. If there's time to make changes and give people time to either work on their game or give the new seven that's coming in time to, you know, click with the boys, it is early in the season rather than late. So, for example, I remember last year we were talking about Matt Moylan and Trindle at the Sharkies, and I was mm-hmm. saying it was getting like mid-ish way through the year, and I was like, you'll probably want to 
be a bit ruthless and go earlier rather than later because if it's too late, you don't have enough time to build into final series. And there's, you could argue that that did happen with the Sharkies where they brought Trindle in just a little bit too late to give him time to yeah. build into it. Yeah. And so I do understand from the perspective of like, it's early in the season, we've got time to build those combos. What do you boys reckon? I, again, like, yes, yeah, to your point, feels a little early. I said this yesterday on yeah, about even. Big Jack Cogger guy. Yeah, number one betting show on planet Earth, how about even. Uh, I don't think Jack Cogger, great in the grand final, right? Just great grand final moment. Killed it. Like, you no know one take that away from him. And I say this with just the utmost respect. I swear to God I do. But, like, did anyone respectfully give a fuck about Jack Cogger before that game? And mm. what I mean is he, he was at the he was bouncing around. He was like – and I just don't see it as being some massive change. I know nothing – with which I speak. I'm an idiot. Well, like, he, I just don't see it as something like, oh, fuck, now we're good. we got Jack Cogger in. Well, you, the, the other way you could look at it as is he was the next up at arguably the best side we've ever seen. And when he did get put into the side, I, I don't think they lost a game as well. Mm. So even when he brought was brought in during Origin. He's playing in the best side for sure. the last fucking five years. But he, well, one of the best more, sides, best sides ever. ever. Yeah. But he still, like, he still lifted to that standard mm. as well as you know yes it is one game it's the biggest game 100%, possibly so 100%. I, I get what you're saying though like a lot of people were yeah he's just brought his depth before this he's a yeah. depth signing he's a depth signing now all of a sudden everyone's on cogger's nuts like he's seriously on his nuts yeah like, like he's in the next name i don't know period. how that guy's walking around <laughs> uh <laughs> so I, I get what you're saying your point is a valid point um it, it might just be his time, you know. Maybe and that I hope year it is. at It'd Panthers. be sick if it was, right? It does look good. They did look in the trials. They probably looked the best they looked when he was in the halves. Right. Okay. Do you think he's been struggling, Jackson Hastings? I think he's. He was. I thought he was okay. I moments. think he's been struggling with injury. I got no inside info, but he looks to me like that ankle is still not sweet. Yeah. He doesn't look. He looks. He doesn't. Not that he was ever that dynamic, but he does look a little bit hindered by it still. And he was grabbing it, I think, in the last game. What I am surprised is, I honestly thought they probably would have gone gamble before Hastings and going to Hastings Cogger combination mm. initially I was against that because I was like they're way too similar you're gonna have you know too many cooks in the kitchen or chefs in the kitchen or whatever but look maybe they're just going you know we like gamble in the sense that he's a genuine ball running big six and we want that in our side mongrel, uh, mongrel he does bring a lot of comp capital and oomph. and like that is the style of footy they want to play you know steel city all that kind of stuff so a just little bit little bit harsh losses. on Jacko but Early in the season, you've got time to, to yeah. work on the combinations, I yeah. guess. If uh, they don't win this week, it gets interesting. Braley is a big inclusion. On the band, yes. You know, Phoenix Crossland hasn't really started the year on the same level that he ended the year last year. And I think people forget just how good Braley was. Good to see him back. Fucking okay. Good to see him back. Yep. Poor bastard. Fucking hell. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. Like We wish him all the best on great the show. Great bloke, too. Yes. Great bloke. All the best. Potty years and years ago. Really, really good guy. From the DMP to you, Jaden. We wish you all the best. That's an official all the best too. Correct. And, and a an really official. hearty one. Yeah. yeah, all caps. We might even, I reckon we almost get someone, you know those motherfuckers at calligraphy, what do they write with like the old ink pens and uh, shit? The fountain, Tom. The fountain, yeah. I think we start sending out like official letters to like players and, all the and best. coaches. All the best. Like all the best from the damn. Also, you're all, you're fucked. So when they're really struggling, like yeah, officially yeah. you're fucked. Yes. You're fucked, <laughs> sincerely. Damn and that's baby. very you got dropped. Sincerely, <laughs> no, we're not like that. No, no, no. We, we, just we're, positive cards. Positive, yeah. just yeah. nice. Uh, yeah, okay, nice cards, yeah. nice cards, nice, nice cards. cards. I think nice cards are really nice thing. To I like that. It's a nice touch. Man is making the man. Could you imagine if you were uh, Jaden Braley about to go out for uh, your first game in a while and you get a nice card all from the your best. old mates at the DMP saying all the best? Yeah, that's and do we maybe put a photo of us in there as well? Just like yeah, we're like all that. smiling like that. I don't no, have the no. handwriting for it. No, I no, we get, we get one of those fucking okay. weapons who do it. We okay. don't do it. Speaking okay. of like nice writing, uh, have you guys been watching Shogun? No, no Sebo but keeps Sebo, about it. Sebo keeps getting me to try watch Is it. Is it sick? It's so toey. Oh, Hello's. fuck yeah, dude. I might get the... it's It's Game of Thrones areas. Oh, really? Get out of town. I'm in town. What platform are we on again? Which town? Uh, Is it Party what? Town? No, Japan Town. Tokyo. Well, I'm just saying, like, which, you yeah. know, is it like a fun town? Is oh, it's it a fun town. No, it's a, it's a um, Game of Thrones town. It's a Did fucking, you just hear it? a lot of politics kit. Oh, yeah. but, like a, but like a great town for the view to be. Yeah, oh, yeah, is yeah, it yeah. Subtitles? Yeah. Yes, yes, Heck. yes, it is. So, so it's all authentic. Like, yeah. I, I even watched a YouTube clip 
of a guy that goes over uh, like old school stuff and says whether it's authentic or not. And so he'll go through stuff and blow up and be like, this wasn't even around at this age that they're talking about, like in the 1600s. Whereas I reckon Shogun is like one of the most accurately depicted shows on TV of the, the era that they're talking about. Love that. I'm going to play out that bitch. Yeah, I'm going to play on, so good. On authenticity, I don't know if you've just noticed this mm. or seen this in the media, but uh, Bradley Cooper... Mm. Spent six years learning to be oh, a and he's thinking, oh, conductor, yeah, and, and he everyone's didn't win. like, "This is pure shit." Like people that actually know oh, and what it is, they're like, "That's not that's that's you know." And did he actually spend six years trying to do it? Six years, apparently, six years. Man. And it was like his the, the the yarn was this was his opportunity to win an Oscar, Oscar I think, yeah. and he didn't end up winning it. Yeah, Oppenheimer won it. it. Killian won it. Yeah, and which is like director. so hot. But I just found that interesting that you'd spend six years doing something, and maybe it takes a lifetime to learn. But so he's just doing it wrong. So I thought you were going to say people, people were like play, trying to play along, and they're just like he's just he's, he can't play this. Because listen, stuff. I will say this: conducting looks like a vibe, a vibe game. Very it looks vibe like, game. It looks like complete this, shit. It's now, like come on, you. let's get you up. do it now. Like it seems to me. Like they're up there trying to motivate their men and women, you know. Yeah. Like I want to be the, more, I want to be boys more and blowing girls. out of you. I yeah. want to, I want to get those, blow those harder. strings a bit more. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. what it looks like. Uh, obviously, the, the problem I had with that movie, I forgot what it was called. It Did you was, watch it? yeah, yeah. It was interesting, but it felt too much like it was trying to win an Oscar. So that seems like oh, what a lot of movies are these days. Yeah, and it's like. Bradley, I love you. I d genuinely love him as an actor. Like he's incredible, yeah, he's and he does a good job. Like he, his mannerisms, you do really. But it was like, you could. It was too much. Like I'm trying hard yeah. to win an Oscar. Whereas this is Oppenheimer, an Oscar Oppenheimer is like genuinely asking these like nihilistic questions of like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it was great stuff. But I haven't seen it. That's that's basically been the narrative though. That's the, that's the is that yeah. Bradley was just. Just gagging yeah, for an Oscar. to win an Oscar. The Oscars, yeah. the, the movies, and the, like I actually, in fairness to them, haven't watched. I don't think any of them. Bro, have you watched June two? No, no, I not yet. Go see no, 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 don't. Let's just. Is it good? Is I it watched, good? I watched June one the other day just to get ready. So I'm gonna go see. Go June watch in IMAX. The new IMAX in oh, Sydney. Oh really? It's it's the, the one at Darling Harbour. Yeah, it's the craziest movie experience I've ever had in my life. Oh really? It was that good, bro. I cannot express to you oh, how good bro it is. Me up, bro. Okay. Bro <laughs> me up, bro. Bro me up, bro. And it's, bro and it's, me up. It's, it's like pretty much sold out the IMAX. Like well, I had to wait four weeks to get in to watch, oh, to watch it. So I bought it as soon as it came out, four weeks, went and saw it by myself. And it is like, I've hear, I've, I'm hearing, I'm hearing terrific this, things. This, I'll put it out there. For me personally, greatest sci-fi film ever made. Wow. June 2. June 2. That's coming June, from a neck beard. That's pure that's, neck beard. That's, that's, that's a neck straight, beard that's straight, out, that's straight out of the, the beard of a neck. No, that's like, that's not Rotten Tomatoes rating. That's neck beard ratings, neck beard which is crazy. Well, which neck, is, neck beards which out of 10. has always <laughs> been more important. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the neck beards, even. no. Yeah. Neck beards, no. No, they know. They're the ones that- uh, Neck beards, no. <laughs> what's, the word, what's the word where they, they uh, negative nuke a uh, review of a movie? That's that's neckbeard chat. I got no idea. Yeah, that's yeah, a negative like, nuke of a yeah. movie. Yeah. Ooh, wow, neck that's so like let's say there's something that's like controversial <laughs> about it. Like yeah. something's been like changed to appease it, oh, you know, crowds. Okay, right, yeah. The neckbeards will go after. Oh, they'll it. Good it. to know that there's still uh, the producers and writers and directors and filmmakers out there, actors that that don't take things that are revered and just butcher them. Oh yeah, because June is a book. Is super revered. I've never read it, but it's basically like the basis from which Star Wars, Star Wars, yeah. Wars yeah. was created. They yeah. said that I saw that. That's Mate. So June's a ridgy did. Yeah. It's like the first. It's thing. the holy fucking. Yeah. It's the holy grail. And yeah. they and you know we've we unfortunately have lived in times where we've seen things butchered. <gasps> but it's also <gasps> nice for Lord just of the to Rings. not be oh. a Marvel thing. Don't say it. Don't no, say I it. don't. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. But like, it's not. It's not <laughs> sort of a mean. Marvel thing, dude. Like, Marvel's just like. Well, Marvel's shit the bed and fallen off a fucking cliff. Has yeah. it? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'd be happy to see. Uh, Marvel's. I, I, I will say. Just said, said, just I will say the other day, Marvel's done. A, a lot of people and he's are anti neckbeard, but neckbeards are representing your interests. To oh no, absolutely. No, They're I, on the front line. Hey, hey, hey. I'm just, I'm just saying they represent your interests. Let this be no. We're pro. If I'm not pro neckbeard, I'm not pro you. I wouldn't be on this show. <laughs> Obviously, I can live in harmony with the neck beard. The neck Obviously. beards represent the people's interests. They, they might are, be a little bit listen, extreme, mate. It's, but they, but it's they're, an they're, ecosystem. Yeah. They get it right, though. <laughs> they get it right. Very rarely is the neck beard wrong about media and uh, content. Yeah, never. Fuck <laughs> no. Fuck but yeah, no. June two is just like some of the scenes. You you just can't believe that that's on 
on film. Like it is, you just want to live, not even live, you just want to experience the world. It's that good. Heck, Fucking unbelievable. And you got to see it at IMAX. Trust me, if you, if you have to wait an extra week or two, go gonna, and see him at IMAX. I'm going to book it in. He He's a great director. What's his name, that guy? Oh, uh, he's French. French yeah. yeah, he's a gun. He only wants to do one more, I'm pretty sure. And then he will hand the reins off if they do more after that. But he's already began to write the third one. That, I heard they were going to do a third one. Oh, mate, this would How have made so not? much money. It's, mate, when you see, because, and also, it's like pretty much. So not one and two are essentially one long movie. So if you watch them back to back, you're essentially watching a long movie. That's well, because because um, one oh, it was a great movie, but I was actually kind of pissed off at the end. That it just it just sort of ended. It's like, like Lord yeah, of the Rings. But that's though. Lord of the Rings. Same but no, thing. but I didn't really know what I was going in for. So oh, you didn't I know there was a part. You didn't know there was a part two. Nah, so well, it was, was pretty was obvious at the end. But yeah, but it was like you weren't uh, expecting it. Though. I wasn't expecting it, so I was expecting a payoff. And then it's like, oh, okay, so now I've got to fucking wait. Like, now nah, I'm with you. Before, I was the same. I was before the, same. the fucking next movie comes out. Like, I had no idea. Oh, I'm with you. I was the same. I, I, I know what you're saying is, is when it does, and you're like, oh, this must be a part one. But before that moment happens, you're like waiting for the payoff. Yeah. That doesn't arrive. And it just didn't pay Do you know off. why there's no robots in the movie? Because man and machine went to war and man won, so now you can't you can't have like robots or like thinking machines. Oh, wow. and then, you know why there's like how prophetic's that? Jesus. And also, and there's that a, shit like the yeah. '60s. There's a ban on old school like guns and that, so that's why like there's sorry there's a ban on nukes. So what you think like why don't they just fucking start nuking each other? There's like a ban on that because all the the planets agreed to. Also, that you can't. Um, the reason why there's sword fighting still is because those shields that they have. When you, if you shoot them with one of the like lasers or whatever, it creates an atomic explosion because of the, the, the impact, the, 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 uh, what's the word? Combustion. The atoms kind of hitting each other yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so like all those little details, you're just like, holy shit. Oh, damn, dude. It's good so stuff. good. Oh, that's There's, a fucking, I, I'm horny to see that movie. Mate, you got, I got to watch Doom 1 again. Yeah, watch it again. You get up to speed. I yeah. bought it the other day. And, and you know what? You need to watch it again too because watch the one because it'll set you up for like which houses are the good guys well good guys bad guys you don't know because if you go into june 2 fresh you're going to go what the fuck who's who like i don't know yeah, what's no, going go on and, go and go and rewatch it i got a lot i got a lot out of rewatching yeah yeah it's a rewatch. lot it's out of rewatching it. uh now uh kevy walters on not talking about the grand final uh we've talked it to death about it so i'm bloody sick of hearing about it it's done and dusted uh, we've just had so many questions about it. I've gone, it's gone and grand final, get rid of it. He's literally talking about it. I've just seen, well, it's because he got asked about well, it. Well, no, but we're not, well, you're not done talking about it then, are you? Well, <laughs> I've just seen a lot of negative publicity about the way we lost, but it was- Stop a talking about it, Kevin. <laughs> but it was a magnificent year for us. At the start of the season, every club's aim is to be there on the grand final day and be on the Diaz. 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 First and foremost, then if you aren't there, you want to be on the ground on grand final day. It hasn't broken the group, and I will tell you something else. 15 other clubs wanted to be there on that day, and they weren't. Sounds um, like you got to talk about the grand final. That's all I'm saying. I, uh, initially, I was like, man, why wouldn't you talk about grand final? Like, like, that's a bit strange. But I do understand his thought process, especially with the Broncos, because they're such a positive side of, like, chip chase anywhere, fucking cutouts anywhere. You don't want to put them in that negative mind state of, like, you know, we lost in the last 20, all that kind of stuff. So but I kind of um, get it. I mean, like- there's, a, there's a golfer called Gene Van, Van Der Velder, I mm. think. He lost the 1999 Open Championship. Basically had one of the great meltdowns of all time. He's trying to fucking hit the ball out of the water. He took his shoes off and his socks off, like really embarrassing stuff. He went back. Uh, he basically, he shot like a four or five over on the hole, forced a playoff, lost it. it it's considered one of the great bed shits of all time. Unfortunately for Gene, right he doesn't get to decide whether people talk about it or not well, because talk- it happened mm. no, but right heavy, he's talking and about it's internally. gonna and and gene lived his the rest of his life being the guy that fucking dropped the bag he went back 20 years later and and finished the hole with a putter like there's always interest for poor old gene because of the nature of the loss unfortunately for kevy two rounds into the season <laughs> You might get asked a couple of times about a fucking bed shit in the grand final to a team whose fucking playmaker ascended to another level, won three in a row. You might get asked about it. He's talking about internally and allowed to talk about it. But you're making it a thing by making it a thing. No, by no. Making it not a, like, do you reckon the boys are walking around talking about it? I doubt it. No. Nah. Who the fuck's no, walking around talking about it? I think it's it? more along the lines of, so outside in it are basically saying grand final rematch, grand final rematch. So in the video session, you could go into that video session as a coach and be like, these fucking guys took the fucking grand final office. We've got to fucking do this to beat them, blah, blah, blah. Whereas he's saying, 
we don't want them in that mindset. This is round two, like round three rugby league. We're not talking about the grand final. We're talking about beating them in round three early in the year. That's that's what he's coming don't from. Don't you reckon it's better to just be like, oh, yeah, it is the grand final rematch outwardly? Yeah, it is. Yeah, we lost. It was a great grand final. Anyway, yeah, well, we know, we'd love to win it. Uh, rather than being like, no, nah, man, not talking about this one. <laughs> nah, not talking about the grand final, you, you, bro. You no, know, we don't. Not now, non side out. Well, now you, you know, made it a thing. It, what it is weird, though, like, the losing team, we expect them to talk about the grand final rematch. But if the winning team came out and was just like talking about grand final all week, we'd be like, man, forget about it. It's fucking last year. Get over it. It's just weird how that, that dynamic yes. works. For sure. But it, but it is a dynamic that exists, whether yeah. you like it or not. I, I, I agree with you, Tom. I think you come out and you go, yeah, it's the first time we've played since the grand final. But you know what? We've got a different side yeah. and it's nil all and it fucking, it means absolutely jack shit. Mm. Because it does, really. One year to the next, it changes a lot, except for the Rabbitohs, who still suck. Mm. Uh, so I can see how this long, wafty answer makes us talk about it. And he's If he'd said in the interview, if he'd said in the interview or in the media session, yeah, it's a grand final rematch, but it's new teams move on, we would not, this wouldn't be a line item. It wouldn't be a segment. Maybe. You don't, you don't reckon people... So if, if, if he just said that, you don't reckon people wouldn't still be hyping up it's a grand final remake? No, pe but people are going to hype it up uh, again. Our good friends at KO in the <laughs> yeah. hype up are going to be using yeah. footage from the grand final. I understand from an external perspective, you're absolutely right. I'm looking at it from an internal perspective of like, you don't need to... Boys, we don't need to talk about it. It's done. Sure. We don't need to be all week. If that, week. Okay. If that's, if that's what... If it's, in the, if it's a purely an internal thing, sure. But even by saying that, yeah, you create is more you're making to it. it a thing. Even if you're like, hey, boys, I know we're playing them again yes. this weekend. Do not think about the time last year where we <laughs> surrendered the greatest lead in grand final history to lose. <laughs> Do not fucking talk about it. Was, what was the year where we, the Queenslanders weren't allowed to say blues? Oh, Did we was, win that? I think, nah, nah, nah. We lost it? Damn. 2019, I think Yeah, it was. that's f coach whisper shit. Yeah, it's coach whisper shit. Uh, that was a, that was Kevy as well. Yeah, maybe Kevy maybe Kevy is two steps ahead, and he wants us only talking about the fact that you're not allowed to talk about it, rather than the actual grand now final. Now that I'd respect. If he was fucking mentalist, if Kevy if Kevy's that wily, credit to him. <laughs> Could yeah. you imagine? But 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 given he's done it before, to ill effect. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Shout out to the coach. Yeah. Maybe he should be uh, just. Letting the footy talking, do okay. the talking. You know? okay. But but again, like if you mean, play good footy, nothing matters. Why, Sol, you, why are you talking about it? Shouldn't Sorry? you be pro Broncos? Like, why you, shouldn't you be listening to the fucking coach? No, but I, look, I'm I'm pro Broncos, but I'm also pro bloke community. Okay, so yeah, you, but, you, but so I, I, I speak the. Are I speak you bloke the first? Yeah, I'm, of course I'm bloke oh, first. Well, I okay. so. So Listen. you're disrespecting the coach. <laughs> if they go out there and they play good footy, it doesn't matter. Mate, you know? that's all that and if they went out there and played good footy in the grand final, like the best footy, they would have won and we wouldn't be talking about it. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, don't so forget. Just, just reading on this um, Gene fella, um, this is the most brutal thing ever. It just says on his Wikipedia, his journey is profiled in the 29 doco series Losers, <laughs> produced and aired on Netflix. Oh, yeah. He's oh, one of the yeah, great yeah, losers that, of all one time. Of the great, those, that's a good documentary series because what it does uh, is it does a documentary on the person that lost an incredible match. Yeah. Uh, and Lose. which is really interesting because you always see the docos and the one that won. Yeah. But you never talk about the one that lost it was literally a bee's dick away from That is cool. The losers. Same spot. It's actually yeah. a good documentary. And um, well, Kevy and the boys will be in it if they do another one. Yeah, if they do another one, you guys will be in there. That's cool. Mm. Adam, Reese. Heavy. Look, you guys—you'll probably get a run. Yeah, you'll you get just a focus on making the eight this year, right? Eh? You just focus on that. We no, but I'm just saying, if there was a fingers I'm, crossed, yeah, don't deflect. I'm all we're deflecting. saying is, if there's a doco that comes out on some of the greatest <laughs> losers of all time, the Broncos are a sniff. Well, 2015 and 2023, you'll actually be in there twice. Oh, I know they'll be like, "What's wrong with this club?" <laughs> Hey, right price, I'll do it. <laughs> Bloke first. Yeah. Bloke first. Yeah, Bloke yeah. first. Um, Xavier Coates is our menu log hungriest player uh, after his incredible try. Use code Coates, C-O-A-T-E-S, for $7 off Indian food this week. Uh, also a reminder, LDV T60 Power Player of the Week is Ruben Cotter with his powerful performance against the Knights. 53 tackles, no misses. LDV T60 has 160 watt cal kilowatts of grunt, which makes it one of the most powerful youths in this class. Check the show notes for more details. Payne has injured. Oh, you got a question? That's a good question. Yep. Um, so you just, you know, you're saying before, like your bloke community first, right? Like that's it. Do you think that you owe it to the bloke community <laughs> to, when you're putting out your team of the week, putting out like a team that actually reflects like a team of the week? Because okay. it feels like, it's just like heaps of Broncos players. 
Like I didn't see Hamale Alakawatu anywhere near it. It was, yeah, he was like, actually on the bench. There was, yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Like it just feels like you know, if you're going to give a fair appraisal of like that, the just maybe you would have watched the Manly Roosters game and maybe a quarter. So we we, we did watch the Manly Roosters game, okay. but we were talking while we did it. Mm. But let's go over the selections then, and we'll, so you we'll have like a discussion. Hamale. You're not a big the only Hamale. one that I reckon I did get wrong, I think Paseca should have been at, at the very least on the bench. Yeah. Uh, but so the edge back row was Wilton and Hosking with Olakawatu uh, on the bench. Now, do you, did you watch Hosking and Wilton play? I watch Hosking play. I watch and I and I respect the fuck out of Zach Hosking. Yeah. All I'm saying is Olakawatu was denied like unfairly, unfairly in my opinion, three or four tries. That now, if he scores three or four, do you let him in? If he carries fifteen blokes over the line instead of yeah. ten, does that is get that, him over the is line? Is that what it like, is? That's what he need to do. He needs to get. He needs to carry fucking like you know thirteen guys and then a couple from the if bench. Hamole, over the line. If Hamole puts both his knees back in instead of one, does that does that yeah. get him over the line? Do you dislocate and relocate a fucking knee is not good enough for you. Hey, I'm being a, the biggest, strongest back row in the comp not good enough for Dennis. How about the comp? this? I'll read Olakwato stats. And then I'll read the two that made it to start stats. How about that? We'll do well, that. Well, that's okay. But stats, stats, stats can be half misleading. The fucking tale, you know? oh, but that's that's a bit of the yarn, though. It's a, a bit, bit of the yarn. yarn. Yeah, it's a bit of yarn. Seventeen run. This is Olakwatu. Seventeen runs, one hundred and sixty-two meters, eighty-four post contact, six tackle breaks, two offloads, twenty-two tackles, three misses, and an error, and four tries. <laughs> okay, now this is Hosking's Hosking. At least one. This is Hosking uh, stats. One try, one try assist. 13 runs, 133 metres, 45 post contact, seven tackle breaks, a line break, two line break assists, two offloads, 35 tackles, zero misses, zero errors. Mm -hmm. uh, so substantially better than Ola Kawatu's. Well, hold on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and this was Wilton's uh, game. A try, a try assist, 16 runs, 123 metres, 34 post contact, seven tackle breaks, a line break, mm -hmm. a line break assist, 30 tackles, five misses, one error. Okay, not bad. So, yeah, so just, I just got a quick question. Okay. Um, uh, Zach plays the Raiders, right? Zach Hosking? Yeah. Who, who are they playing? Who are they playing on the weekend? The Tigers. Okay, Tigers. Where'd they come last year? What the fuck? And who was Teague Wilton playing against? Uh, the Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Okay, sweet. So, like, two under six teams. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Compared to... Well, if Hamole plays the West Tigers, like with all due respect, happens? what, does he get 300 post-contact metres and runs a K? <laughs> 300 <laughs> post Runs a K. <laughs> um, you can only play what's in front of you. No, and it's if, a great if we went off, if we went off that of, like, you know, comparing teams, you'd basically just... You'd pick pretty much three or four players from all the top games on the weekend. You'd never pick any of the low-tier players. So that's, you got to play what's in front of you, I think. Yeah, okay. Just, just. You know, no, we were just making sure. Just we, just, we, we wanted, I think we wanted to get our head around how yeah. you picked the team. Yeah, and for clarity, the choice the end of the day, and right? for, for clarity, for, so people know, the yeah. team is selected by vote. So we sit down before the show on Monday, we, I read out who I think, then the boys read out who they think, and then we discuss majority vote gets that position. So for example, if one person has, Ola Kawatu, or two people, and the three others have Wilton, then obviously Wilton gets in. Mm. That's how it works. I don't just select this. Okay, not so me. you're passing the buck a little bit there. No, so it's a democracy. Do you, do you have more voting powers than other people? No, I, I don't. I mean, you, you can ask Maddie. There's been times where I've, I've been overvoted. You, you, you reek of a veto guy. No, yeah. ask Maddie. Have I been overvoted before? I, I reckon it goes the other way, to be honest. What do you mean? Like, de de he threatens you. No, no, no. Oh, no. sorry. No, no, no. Like, he'll. he'll He'll do his team, say his piece first, but then is very, very happy to, to change his Because what do I say every time? Everyone's going to say, fuck me, Dennis, your bias. Exactly, bias. yeah, yeah. Mm. That's why I say, say that. Huh? And, what, and what bias doesn't exist elsewhere? Timmy's but, bias is fucks. But sometimes, you have to, <laughs> but sometimes you have to overcompensate, especially when you get accused of it constantly. So you have to try to overcompensate yeah, to yeah, make sure that... Okay. That isn't the case. Listen, I don't, I mean, we're busy Mondays, but like, I reckon you probably just get us on the blower. <laughs> <laughs> I will show you what being unbiased looks like. <laughs> just every week. Manly one, one to seven. Yeah, yeah, every week. Yeah, manly one to seven. <laughs> just for shits, because you said the Tigers thing, I went back and looked at Olakowatu's stats from um, the last time he played the Tigers. He had four line break assists. There you just go. Just himself. There you go. There you go. See, and I mean. The team, the team had 16 line breaks. 
that yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. So that um, sounds about right. Not that's, Benji, though. They didn't have Benji coaching them. That's a good point. Say. Well, he was coaching actually last year. <laughs> he was. If you no, he wasn't the head coach. Well, well like if you believe. He was, he was no, the no, no. He box, definitely Parker. wasn't. The, the yarn that I heard, whispers in the car park, was when they were going all right, they'd given him more power, and then people stepped back in, and that's when they started going not ah, good again. Okay. Well, we wish Benji all the best. We do. And hasn't Go that ahead. yarn just got to be completely destroyed? Oh my! Talk about an ambush mate. on the great Benji Marshall. Yeah. We would, we've been talking about this though. He, he, I think needs to be a little bit wilier than that. In that, he's got to know, being exposed to rugby league media for as long as he has been, that it's fucking. Have you seen what they've alleged? A, though? It's a dirty game out there. Have you seen what's been alleged from the West Tigers? Oh, uh, that it was Scott Fulton. Is that that's that? that's what the Tigers have alleged. Yeah. That, that that was a hit piece, kind of all put together yeah. by. Disgruntled people. But then, but that's then, what's alleged uh, by Tigers. That's why Fulton, who was let go as the head of football. Yeah, head of football. But then uh, Bulldog Richie of I'm Ooh, still not surf, sold man. on you on NRL 360 fame. He was like, oh bloody, I don't need to help have people help me write my story. He said he was offended by the Ooh. assertion that he would get other people. So he's alleged that that's not true. He's alleged that it's not true. He's Ooh. saying bull, bulldogs bullshit. Bulldogs bullshit. Bulldogs bullshit. You know what I don't get about that article? There are so many other ways to have a crack at Benji than that. So, for example, an article writes itself. Madge couldn't do it. Tim Sheens couldn't do it. Here's a long list of coaches that have been in forever. What makes us think Benji's going to do it? It's his first time he's ever... You know what I mean? There's so many yeah, ways. Yeah, you yeah. could go through his career. You could pick it apart. You could say, look yeah. what happened here. Look what happened here. Like, and that's a genuine argument. What I don't get is, is the article that was written was just a nonsense well, argument. But it was, it was also it was, the same person who like, counted swear words in the <laughs> fucking podcast. But he's pulling from... He's, he's pulled it from a, uh, a comment he made in the preseason last year to the point where there was journos there at the that media day mm. asking him if the losses mount up, would you pick, Would you consider becoming a 24-7 coach? That's yeah. what they asked him. That question was asked. That's the question. Because like, like, what, yeah. yeah. what, like, what about sleep? Like, what do I do there? He's, no, 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 no. Fuck sleep, mate. It's 24-7. Yeah, no, fuck that, mate. You need to get on the gear. You need the, you need the meth and stay awake. But he was like, oh, yeah, like because I want to hang out with my wife and kids from five to eight. Yeah, it's crazy. But the problem is rugby league media doesn't like, uh, you know, family men. It's like funny, like that. Like another another example that mental health, fucking you know, lifestyle balance, all that kind of stuff. But we'll also fucking pin yeah. you for having uh, that. Uh, don't be a pussy, all right. <laughs> Neglect your family. But my point is, on some level, Benji, and maybe maybe this is a ridiculous take from me. Maybe but on some level, he word. should have known that there that are people taken. out there that would take that and run with it. And you just fucking talk shit. You go, mate, I don't even fucking sleep anymore. Yeah, yeah that's I just it. live and breathe regularly. Yeah. Like, I'm on an hour a night. Mate. He should be doing oh, that last now. night. I got fucking thirty seconds, mate. I'm yeah. just breathing football and just talk shit. Yeah. What's he going to come around to his house and stand I out think, the front looking through the mirror? I think he's Quite been so used, window, rather. He's been so loved by the rugby league community. It's probably taking him back a bit. By the knives coming out. Oh, he was rattled. As like, fuck. so soon, so soon. So I think you're right. It is a lesson for him to learn. Like, you just give him either nothing or you go down the route. I think Kevy actually, outside of, you know, I know that, Kevy does this pretty well where he just takes the piss out of himself. Yeah. Like, with the Selwyn Cobo situation, the gamble, mm. you know, like, there's two ways to go about it. I agree. Like, you go all down the route of you just take the piss yeah. or you just give him absolutely or you get, nothing. Or you say, fuck all. Yeah, like you just go, I think it would be so funny if Benji started pretending now <laughs> to be a 24-7 coach, like posting photos at like four up. in the morning and shit. And he just should like, put makeup up bags yeah, under his like eyes and that. He's super tired of bed, like, <laughs> like a old man Volk training. And he just lays there for 30 seconds like, all right, good to go. He all should right. go the old man Volk route. Yes. And just lean into yes, the joke. Yes, yes. Wear one of those captain snooze hats. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep in the middle of the fucking field. While yeah, that yeah. would be fucking that hilarious. That would be so funny. Um, but uh, the great Benji. Actually, outside of the first 20, and I think, look, it's easy to jump on the Tigers and, you know, they got dominated by the Raiders. But we have to remember that was their round one. That was the Raiders round two. So you can understand yeah, why yeah, that yeah. first 20, they got blown off the park. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Like, whoa. Um, hopefully they bounce back this week. Also, don't forget, guys, Musashi. Uh, use code BLOKE35 to get 35% off Musashi products, excluding bundles. Um, they've been blown away by the amount of people using the code, guys, so make sure to go to the link, use it, use the code BLOKE35. Uh, Timmy Zufight, Kim, uh, Kim Thurman, Keith Thurman, allegedly tore his bicep and has pulled out. Uh, 
Zoo will fight Sebastian Fundora uh, Sunday, March 31st, live from the US, exclusively on main event. Order on KO Sports, and you don't need a KO s- subscription. Boys, what are your thoughts on this one? Tim wins and wins well. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt about that. That Fundora Just, it's guy. It's next man up, mate. Next man up. Although he's I have fucking, heard that this guy is a dude, bit of a six, six foot seven. Savage. How does he? Oh, six, six foot five, six. How five, can yeah. he get down to that weight? <laughs> I, I, I don't know whether he's just naturally a fucking slender man, but he's a slender man. Like I don't know. That's got to be one of the great cuts all time if you're that tall. Remember the on the internet the actual slender man yeah, scary guy. Edge. Maybe that's him. Who went as slender man to Halloween last year? That the Pandora. <laughs> the no. big tall basketball. Oh, it wasn't Porzingis, was it? No, was it, uh, the French guy. What's his name? Muggsy Look. Bogues. Oh no, fucking Wembenyana. Yeah, Wembenyana. That kid can play. He can play. Um, um, your thoughts on this one, boys? Listen, I I be honest with you, I don't know anything about Fundora outside of his size and his height. Fondora, is is that with cheese on potatoes? Fondue. Fondue. That's fondue. That's whenever I hear yeah. fondue. And it's not just cheese on potatoes. There's actually chocolate fondue where you can dip, like, fruits Man, into it. Some great memories. That sounds pretty That cool. reminds me of sitting in – oh, now I'm forgetting. Switz- no, not Switzerland. With the missus eating that. It was great. Dude, it's good shit. Is it Switzerland? There's a – you know, there's a – Yeah, there's a, a chocolate people. There's an MP. There are chocolate people. There's a the, 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 the fucking – is he the Premier of Tasmania trying to get re-elected? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he promises – Liberal – the liberal, liberal – The liberal – uh, Member. And you leader. are big politics guys. Yeah, we're no huge politics guys. Uh, but he, if he wanted, he's running on. If he gets reelected, he's going to build the world's largest chocolate fountain. Well, he's going to kick in twelve million. Yeah, to build personally for really taxpayers money. No, taxpayers, taxpayers money. money. They're oh, going to kick in twelve million. Yeah. No yeah, worries. It's, it's like a, cause it's, and it's like a three hundred million dollar exercise. Oh, going to be the biggest in the southern hemisphere or the world. I think it was the world. I think it was the world. We went Definitely to the. We went to the. Is it Lint? Chocolate, the famous lint. We lint, went there. Yeah. It was actually pretty cool. I'm not going to lie to you. Listen, as good as Cadbury? Sure not. No, no, but like this. So you go to the factory Come and on. they take you on a tour, like the history of chocolate. It's actually really, really interesting. Are there Oompa Loompas in there? Uh, I didn't see any, but usually they buy them at the back. Yeah, they're at the back. Yeah. Oh, they hide them usually. They yeah, hide they, them when they, they come toil. in. Yeah. Was very, very interesting. Was very, very mm-hmm. interesting. So that could be a, something, the biggest yeah. chocolate. Could be. Could be. Mm. Anyway, look, I think Tim wins. I think Tim Off wins. the back of that? Yeah. Tim wins and wins well. Sunday, March 31, I believe Easter. Is that Easter? Ooh. Easter Sunday. Oh, yeah. Love that. Ooh, Is yeah. that an omen? That's nice. Well, chocolate. We're talking chocolate. chocolate. Yeah. Easter. Chocolate. Fondue. Fondue right. on Tim that. Zoo. Yeah. Tim Zoo. Fondue, Tim <laughs> Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> tiramisu. <laughs> tiramisu. I love tiramisu, <laughs> Tim Zoo. Uh, buy that bitch, KO. Yeah, buy that's it. the sort of fucking uh, analysis so. you can expect here. Fondora. <laughs> <laughs> Fondora has a tendency, you'd think being six foot five, six foot six around that area is, you'd think that he would, you know, use his range to dominate fights. He actually doesn't. He fights on the inside, which is bizarre. Really? Yes. But in saying that, if he does it against Tim Zhu, he's getting knocked out literally in the first few rounds, especially probably rips to the body. I, I reckon a rip to the body is probably going to be his biggest weapon. But I did watch a recent uh, interview by Fondora when he was announced that he'd got the fight. And he said, in this camp, our main focus has been boxing smart. That's all we've been talking about, boxing smart. And when someone says that, it usually means not getting into brawls. Yeah. So I think we might see a very different Fondora than what we have seen in the past. For example, um, Mendoza, the one that it was, so it was one of the biggest uh, surprise wins over Fondora before he fought Zoo. So Zoo was already supposed to fight Fondora because Fondora was supposed to be the next big thing. Mm. But Mendoza in the ninth round knocked him out, but Fondora was winning the whole fight. Yep. And so there's an argument to be made if Fondora had been smart about his boxing, he outpoints Mendoza and he'd already be where, you know, well, he ended up getting to Timu anyway. So it might be a little bit of a different fight than people think, but I think eventually Tim's pressure and Fondora's lack of power, it's still decent power, like he still knocked people out, um, is going to be too much for Fondora to handle. And then. Terence Crawford only last 72 hours has put his application in for the WBO, WBO mandatory or to be you know put in the ranks and he'll become the mandatory of whoever wins this fight because it's a unification fight of WBO and the WBC uh, belts. If, if Tim wins, when Tim wins, does that mean he's a two-time world champion? Or is it just that he's a world champion I, in two different... No, I think two-time uh, means you've defended it. I'm pretty sure. Or is two-time you've lost he's it and back? No, I think it's two-time is when you've... I think two oh, times when you lose it and win it, win it back. back. Anyway, he's unified the belts. Yeah, okay, two of right. two, and his father, 
did three. He unified three, his father. Okay. He's going to unify two. Um, but I thought he went to undisputed Kostya. He did. Oh, he fuck, was undisputed. Maybe. He must have, yeah, he so he must have unified. Oh, belts. actually, I think there wasn't as many belts back oh, then, maybe. okay, right. Maybe. But I, he, he, there might have been more belts. But I he do was know he, did he, was, he was undisputed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> undisputed. Um, but the big thing is, is obviously the belts are big for Tim. But the biggest thing is the game has changed now because that Terence Crawford fight was almost like, will it happen? Won't it happen? It didn't look like it was going to happen. Mm. Now, he's the mandatory. It's almost a guarantee that if Timmy wins this, when Timmy wins this, he goes straight to fight Terence Crawford next, which is unbelievable. You couldn't fight a more complicated fight in his career. It'll be the biggest challenge. Obviously, the bookies will have Crawford first. But when we talk about biggest fights in Australian boxing history, that may be one of Would the Would that fights. be in Vegas, do you reckon? Or yeah. do you reckon that'd be Yeah, I'd cool. say it'd be in Vegas. The only one that I – like, I'd love to know the numbers. The only one that I think that might have been bigger, as in within recent history, might be Pacquiao Horn, just because of the name Pacquiao. Mm. But this one, when it comes to like... I thought you were going to say maybe uh, Green Mundane. Uh, Green Mundine. That was actually huge. That was huge, Australia. yeah. I like, was, honestly. Green, Green Mundine, I believe, the second one was the biggest... Pay-per-view we Pay-per-view had? in Australia. Well, there you go. I think yeah. it still is. Because I think it still is. Yeah, that, that, that would that well, make maybe, a lot of sense. Maybe Pacquiao... Um, uh, Horn. No, Pacquiao... Uh, Mayweather. Or Mayweather McGregor beat it domestically. No. Oh, domestically. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, the thing about the Zoo Crawford fight, you're getting two blokes in their prime going at, like, fighting. Mm. So, like, that's the difference. Was Manny Pacquiao a little bit, you know, over the hill to a degree when he fought Horn, uh, whereas this is literally, like, two absolute top of the top of the tier, world-class fighters fighting for those belts. Look at so. my veins. So you've got to watch this fight, guys. But Timmy got to get that win. And also this, this there's a lot of um, boxers, like boxing and analysis or analysts that know way more about boxing that are saying this is actually a harder fight for Timmy than Keith Thurman would have been due to Keith Thurman's inactivity and his age in the ring. Uh, so very exciting. All right, now quickly. Panthers, Bron- Broncos, where are you going? Fuck, you've Bron- pushed out to four bucks. Yeah, four bucks. Well, Payne Haas Macaroonies. is out. Payne Haas out. Reynolds out. Yeah, they're... Uh, I think the line's from eight and a half out to ten or eleven now. I'm uh, I'm Panthers. Yeah, Panthers. I'm Panthers. I don't hate the line though, but that's just because I'm a fucking. I like Panthers degenerate. thirteen plus. Sorry. Well, Warriors. You're, you're missing Raiders. Uh, Warriors. I think I actually think this game could be tight. Tight like a yeah. tiger. Yeah, Warriors need to win it. I think it could be tight. Oh, and three wouldn't be I, nice. I think this actually could be uh, match of the round. I really, really th- either this or Eels versus Manly. Yep. Well, we're the match of the round every round. Really. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Oh, no, it's true. <laughs> yeah. It is true. Okay. Objectively. Uh, so what are you going here? Warriors? I'm Warriors. going to the Warriors. Was. Tight. Tight one. Up the Wars, not the Ras? No Ras. Okay. Ray, uh, Roosters, Rabbitohs. Roosters. Good side versus shit side. This Roosters. could be a bit. This could be a bit of a shitter though. I'm going Rabbits. Oh, I'm yeah? going Rabbits. Because I'm just like, surely with everything that's gone wrong, this is the game you go nuts. They don't have that good of a forward pack there. I said it. Sorry. <laughs> Bulldogs, Titans. If you can pick this, like if you genuinely think you know what's going to happen in this game, you're talking complete shit. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Yeah, there's no one knows. No one fucking knows. Dogs I'm going to go the favorites. Titans because my boy Kieran Foran's back. Hopefully. Poppy Foran. Although I don't know. That's, that's 100% named. confirmed. I... Poppy, you reckon Poppy Foran's just going to spank the young Bulldogs? Go, boys, you've been a bit naughty. I think Spank Poppy. I think club. Poppy comes out if he plays and takes the belt off and gives it. <laughs> puts him over his knee. Yeah, puts him over the knee. Oh, I think the dogs. Okay. Uh, Dragons, Cowboys. This Cowboys. will be a fucking Cowboys. humping Cowboys. and a half. This is Surely. a smorgasbord of tries. I'd all, but this is the this. That's the sort of game the fucking Dragons will win. Listen, it is. Damn says find a way to fuck you one way or another. <laughs> but I will go the cows. <laughs> Tigers, Sharks. Tigers four twenty. Oh, it's yeah. not the worst price. That's not bad. At Leichhardt. Oh, I like that it fucking was, matters. They it lost d- it. That doesn't. But it's the, only been the Tommy Radonikus Memorial game, they got <laughs> fucking spanked. Yeah. It just proves that, so, that Leichhardt holds nothing It means anymore. nothing. No. But it is if you're going to get up for a game, yeah. that's it. It was Sunday afternoon. The sun was shining. Yeah. There was old boys there. There was people in tears and they got pumped. They got fucked. Okay. I don't even think they know that's their home ground. Eels, Seagulls. Jeez. Manly paying a dollar ninety eight is such good money. Mm. I'm going Eels just because they're at home. If Manly was at home, I'd go Manly. Oh, but fuck, yes. come on. Uh, Eels not, aren't that good. Knights Storm. 
Storm. Uh, Storm being fa- uh, 19 favourites is absurd. But Storm is seeing Hughes, know, Munster, Nelson. No, but Jack Cogger, respectfully, Ooh. I don't believe you yet. And the Storm are... Like, would it shock you if the Storm just pull out a gritty win over a Knights team that doesn't know how to play footy anymore <laughs> after, like, a good run of form last year? Now they're dropping cunts. They don't know what's going on. Like, the Storm will just grind this one out. Okay. I'm going Storm. Mm. Yeah, Storm. Okay. Big storm win. That's us done and dusted. We'll go and fuck ourselves. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.